guys, today I'm gonna to be doing a first impressions and I'm gonna be talking to you guys about the new Makeup Geek Power Pigments. These recently launched and oh dear God, I haven't been this excited about a Makeup Geek launch in a long time. Makeup Geek has really disappeared from a lot of YouTube videos. Like I honestly, when I first started YouTube, they were like the number one brand that was talked about all over the place. Makeup Geek were the only eyeshadows basically being used. They were collaborating with people. It was just like a really exciting time for them as a brand. I feel like every launch they were coming out with was so good. Then you just quit hearing about them. And then they came out with the In The Nude collection and some bronzers. And I did a review on that, which I'll link, but it's honestly, I felt so guilty because I tried the collection and I was just a little underwhelmed because the price just seemed a little high for Makeup Geek and the colors were just very neutral, very, nude and I just was like, I was just a little iffy on it. It wasn't a bad collection at all. It just didn't like send me. It didn't make me super excited for a collection. And I was like waiting for something new to come out. And then they launched a bunch of lip products, which the foiled lip glosses. And again, you guys know I'm not a huge fan of metallic lipsticks. So they were really metallic. And then there were the Showstopper cream stains, which for me were a little drying and a little bit streaky. Um, I like the idea of them. I love the packaging and everything like that. It just, to me, I like the iconic lipsticks. Those are really good, but I, I just find myself not reaching for them and I don't know why that is. But I just love Makeup Geek as a brand. I think that they're so great. I think Marlena is the sweetest and I think that Makeup Geek is just generally an awesome company. And I love that she started from the ground and built her empire with really affordable makeup products. Now, as time has progressed, Makeup Geek has just kind of lost the limelight, I guess. And I think that's because there were a lot fewer launches. I know that Marlena was going through a lot of things in her personal life and she's also starting a new company, Marste. And I think that Makeup Geek just slowed down a bit. And so to come out with these, I think was a perfect Thing to really bring them back. So I hope that these are as good as I hope that they're going to be. Generally, I absolutely love Makeup Geek eyeshadows. These are power pigments. So these are a pressed pigment, supposedly very, very high color payoff. I have not tried these yet. I haven't swatched them. I haven't done anything with them, but I love the colors that are launched. I think that these are an awesome group of colors to first come out with. I'm sure they're gonna extend this if these do well. Makeup Geek recently actually released selected products in Target. So if you guys were ever wanting to pick it up and actually see the products in person, looks like Makeup Geek is sold in a lot of Targets now, which is really exciting. I was surprised. I would have thought like Ulta or something, but Target it. I gotta say, I really love this like magnetic palette situation going on here. Oh, so I'm gonna get into the nitty gritty of all of this. I'm gonna go over cost breakdown. I'm gonna go over my thoughts. I'm gonna use this on camera and I'll let you guys know what I think about these. You guys can see my first impressions on whether or not they blend out well, if I have issues with patchiness, etc. So before we get into the video, make sure you guys subscribe to my YouTube channel. I do upload every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. You guys can also follow me on all my other social media stuff if you want to keep up with me and hear the shit I got to say. Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave Snapchat out again because I haven't been using it. God, I'm wishy-washy. Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. You guys know. I'm, I'm leaving out Facebook too. Instagram and Twitter. Facebook, just who uses Facebook? I mean, let's be real. For like social media, not me. And both of them are Rob Beauty Christy. They're the most active. Like Instagram stories are my favorite. I don't even think about Snapchat anymore. I just pop open Instagram stories. And so if you guys don't have an Instagram, my question is why? I have a lot of people that are like, I don't have Instagram. I was like, why don't you have Instagram? It's the best. Their algorithm, total butt shit. But Instagram, kind of the best. Also, let's just address the elephant in the room. I took out my hair extensions. They grew out, they were twisting. They just, I can't get into the hair guy until the end of next week. So right now we're just gonna have real thin hair. Now let's talk about these power pigments. These cost $9 per pigment. So obviously not insanely inexpensive, but not terrible. If you wanted to buy these all in a bundle, it costs you $70. It would have been 90 if you bought them. There are 10 different shades. So it ends up saving you $20 to buy these all as a bundle instead of getting them individually. The cost breakdown is $4 and 50 cents per gram. There are 0.07 ounces or two grams of product in each pan. The traditional Makeup Geek eyeshadows are 1.8 grams and 0.064 ounces. These are 450 per gram. Those are 333 per gram. If you buy these in the bundle, because it reduces your price down, it brings these down to 350 per gram versus 450. So you end up saving a dollar per gram. If you're looking for that, it actually is comparable to the regular Makeup Geek shadows price. So ABH shadows for comparison, 
Epson are $7.19 per gram because they are a $12 eyeshadow pan and they are 1.67 grams. So it's kind of confusing, but basically ABH, most expensive. Makeup Geek Power Pigments coming in second. Makeup Geek regular single pan eyeshadow shades are the cheapest. We're gonna see if these are worth your money. I'm going to do swatches real quick of everything. Untouchable, dynamic, and potential. Transform, tenacious, indestructible, invincible, dedicated, courageous, and unleashed. These are swatches of all of the colors here. I think I'm gonna stick in more of this family today. I like these. I might, I might kind of play with a lot of them if I can. I don't wanna like say, I'm gonna use all these shades on my face today, but I'd like to use a lot of them. Now what I'm a little weird about is that these ones all right here, like specifically these three shades look like the same thing. I think if it were me, I probably would have added all the rainbow shades and then maybe like a mustard, a black, and a like really good slate gray maybe or something different because these all seem very, very similar. I do have some concerns about these before starting. Like I'm super excited to use these, but the term like power pigments, press pigments, it just like makes me get flashbacks to subculture. I'm like, oh, more pigment equals usually crappier blending. So I'm hoping that's not the case with these. I want these to be so good. I love Makeup Geek and I want this to be like a fire launch. So I am hoping it is. It's gonna be an adventure for both of us. I'm gonna go wash these swatches off and we're gonna get started. So I think as a transition shade, I'm gonna use this yellow here because I feel like the blues, the teals and the purples will all go with it. I know this is a weird way to start, but like, but yeah. I'm gonna go in with my Smith 232 brush and I'm gonna dip into the shade here, Potential. Please have potential to be a good eyeshadow. So far so good, it's blending out nicely. If I'm looking for it to be a little more pigmented, I'm just kind of putting a little bit more over the top and just blending it in and it doesn't seem to be clinging weird or anything. It's just kind of doing its thing. I wonder how these compare to like Sugar Pill Pro Shadows, which I do have. Maybe I'll do a video where I compare the two. Okay, I found my favorite brush. This is the Makeup Addiction Precise Blender brush, the one I always talk about that's so good. It looks, again, stained, but it's not. So I think the shade I'm gonna go in with now is this one. Yeah, let's do that one. And that's the shade Transform. I gotta admit, these are colors I wouldn't traditionally use. I try to step out of my comfort zone today. I'm trying to do something different and test colors I wouldn't normally go for. Just because, I mean, it can get kind of boring using the same stuff all the time. Like the ones I'm obviously drawn towards are like the orange, yellow, red, purples, but I, I'm trying to like do the opposite of what I want to do. And this is the one here. I'm gonna go into this shade here, the Tenacious shade. Tenacious D. This is a weird looking eye look. It looks kind of cool how it's like green where it mixed in with the yellow up here and then it's blue where I build it up. That's kind of neat. Now I'm gonna go with this shade here, which is indestructible. I'm gonna do like a negative space wing liner. This is why I always do my eyes first when I'm not sure about a product because you can see I'm getting a bit of fallout here on my cheeks. I'm just taking a bit of those colors, the same colors, and then patting them on my lid. I'm gonna do, again, a negative space wing liner. So it'll probably cover a lot of this, but I just want the colors there. Ooh, you can see when I pat that blue shade, the last one that I used on the outer corner, 
really packs more of a punch versus blending it in. Oh yeah, they definitely have more color payoff when you pat them versus when you really buff them into the skin. I'm not making this look good because again, I'm gonna take a, a thing and go boop and just kind of flick it on back so it doesn't really matter. Yeah, look at that, like when I diffuse it out and I really blend it in, it looks like a much softer shade, but over here it's just like BAM! So now what I wanna do is I'm gonna take some concealer and I'm going to do a wing liner, but instead of doing it like with black, I'm gonna do it with concealer so that it looks like a negative cut out space. And then I'm gonna do the bottom lash line. I, you'll see, I could just do it. takes so much concentration, I don't think I've spoken for like 10 minutes. I think it looks fine. The only thing I'm a little nervous about is when I do my lower lash line, generally I, what I do is I do my foundation first and I do my lower lash line, but there's quite a bit of fallout from these shadows. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go pop my lashes on, do my foundation off camera, BRB. Foundation is on, lashes are on. What do I think so far? I'm not gonna tell you. <laughs> You're gonna have to be patient and wait till the end. So I think I'm gonna go with the purples underneath my eye um, because why not? Maybe I'll just do these two. I don't know, we'll see. So I did put some concealer on, make sure all the lines are out of it. And I need to set it with a powder because I am afraid of the fallout. This is the Hourglass Veil Translucent Setting Powder. Still testing it. I definitely feel like it does smooth the skin out though. Courageous, which is this guy. Oh. That is very soft. That one's even softer, like it kicked up a ton. Yeah, fallout. I'm gonna kind of stamp these instead of doing the blending motion because I definitely get better color payoff that way. I think I might just do two shades on the lower lash line. This is Invincible. Oh, that is such a pretty purple. Yeah, I feel like they look so similar applied. Maybe if I were doing like a full eye look with these purples, it'd be different. Okay, let's hope I can whisk away this fallout. Huh. Good thing I powdered. I think I'm gonna use black for my waterline. And this is the finished look. Okay, so this is the finished face of makeup. I obviously did the rest of my face off camera. This is the MAC Give Me Sun bronzer, and then I've got the new Smashbox and Blotta highlighters on. I'm loving them so much. I really like those highlighters a lot. The lashes are the style Eldora lashes and the style M111, I believe, which I really like them. They're really dramatic though. The lips are Wet n Wild Mochalicious in the center with the KKW glasses on the outside. And then, is that it? Foundation is the CoverGirl Vitalist Healthy Elixir. Concealer is ColourPop, no filter. All right, I'm gonna give you guys my thoughts on these and I will let you know if I think they are worth your money. I had no issues with them. No issues blending. I feel like the color payoff is beautiful. I think the price is obviously best if you're gonna buy them in the bundle. So it's $70 for 10. So that brings them down to $7 a piece. I don't think that that's unreasonable. It is expensive, but it's not like unbelievable. The colors actually are so beautiful. They could have benefited, I've already said this, but these three shades in particular, this, this, and this, look so similar when applied that I think black and white would have been best because I think like a really, really crispy white pigment would have been, oh, and then a really deep black would have been really nice. I think that would have rounded out this collection. But again, they probably are going to expand on this, so it's not like this is 
forever the be all end all for these shadows. If that is the case, I think that they are really nice. I really like the way that they blend. I do get a bit of fallout and a bit of kickback from them. That's not unheard of specifically with really pigmented shadows because they're so soft. I like that these are in square pans actually because it looks like it's gonna fit to the very end of this. I like them. I think that they're really good. Would I buy these myself if I didn't get them sent to me? Yes, I would. Actually, I was planning on buying them because I wasn't sure I was still on Make a Geek's PR list and I, I was so happy that I was, but they remind me similarly of the Sugar Pill Pro palette shadows. Those are huge though and I think they're like 12 bucks per, I think. And those are really great shadows that are very similar to these, especially in the color combos. So if you're looking for something, I really do love the Sugar Pill Pro, but I don't think you'll hate these at all. These are a really high quality shadow. I don't know if these themselves are gonna be sold at Target, but if they are, I'd pick some up if you really like any of the colors. I even think that nine isn't a bad price for these. They, you can tell, like they blended out really seamlessly. I didn't have any issues with patchiness. I was concerned that they were gonna be patchy or grabby. Uh, not at all, actually. Will I use these again? 100%. Um, this is obviously my first impression. I've only used these this one time. I have a lot of people be like, stop with the first impressions. No, I'm not going to stop with the first impressions because I get too much makeup generally and have so many launches coming in to do full long reviews on everything. My review on, for, on this really, I don't think is gonna change specifically because I know it worked. They all blended out. Everything was good. The only negatives that I have on these was the fallout, which happens with almost every shadow. Not always, but specifically really pigmented shadows like this. I feel like that's common. Um, I love the eye look that I created. I think it's really fun. And it's colors I typically wouldn't do, but I actually really like the look of. Um, the only negatives really, again, are the fallout and those shades just being so similar. They're not bad at all, but I feel like there's not enough differentiation of them to need the three, if you catch my drift. But I actually, think that my favorite part about these is the fact that instead of launching power pigments and coming out with this that were like warm browns and things like they went rainbow and that's my favorite thing I love that they're branching out into super colorful things and starting off with this and then building upon the collection hopefully so I really really like these a lot I love this case specifically I need I want like 50 of these magnetic cases and I want to like replace all of my Z palettes with just this in general because this is so beautiful. I love it. I really, really, really like it. I'm so glad that Makeup Geek is back and coming out with new and cool and exciting things. I, I was a little let down by the In The Nude collection just because I was hoping for something like this. So this is exactly what I was hoping that Makeup Geek would do. Their shadows were what put them on the map to begin with. So I think that expanding upon that and coming out with like really cool, innovative things like this. Innovative, I mean, it's an eyeshadow, but really, really bright, fun pops of color. I think that we've had enough nude eyeshadow palettes for a while. I think, I mean, obviously they're still really good and wearable, but if you're into color, I think you'll really like these. So my first impression review on these is I really like them and I think you will too. I'm I'm impressed and I'm, I'm so happy. Makeup geek, you're back and you're beautiful and I love you and I'm so glad to have new Makeup Geek products because honestly, if you guys have followed me for any length of time on my channel, Makeup Geek is like that one brand that I've always loved. Now, I, they have had a couple of misses for me. Again, like those metallic, like lip foiled lip glosses. I wasn't a huge fan of those. And also the highlighters, I was surprised by. I wish they would relaunch new highlighters. I liked some of them, but they were like a lot of duo chromey. And then I also had a, almost all of my highlighter pans fell out of the packaging because they weren't like glued in properly. And so that was like a big grievance of mine but for a minute there it seemed like makeup geek was like like how it was like 50 bucks or 55 dollars or whatever for that in the nude palette for like a few nude eyeshadows i was like damn that is so expensive and i feel like they marketed themselves originally as like an affordable i think it was maybe because they were an affordable dupe to mac shadows but then everything has reduced in price i feel because brands are catching on to that you can get really high quality like bh cosmetics and ColourPop for a really low price. And so a lot of brands are kind of stepping on board with that and they're like, okay, we can't really charge the exorbitant amounts that we used to be able to. I'm really impressed with these. I think that they're so beautiful and I think I've made it damn clear what I feel about them. So we're gonna move on. Well, that's my review. I think that this face of makeup is really beautiful. I'm really super into it and I hope you guys like it as well. If you do, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I upload new videos every Monday, Wednesday and Friday. You guys can also follow me on all my other social media stuff. Everything is raw beauty. Christy. So Instagram and Twitter. <laughs> Woo! You really should follow on those places. If you don't, it's hurtful. And if you do,
We're best friends and I love you. Thank you. All right, you guys. Well, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you at my next video. Bye. Hey guys, today I'm going to be doing a review for you. Well, I'm not going to call it a review. No, I'm going to start over. That's what I'm going to do. Really, really taking a, a back seat to a, not a back seat. A, damn, that's way even bigger. Way even bigger. <laughs> Gotta say, I really. Hello? Um, hello? Okay. Uh, you, 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 you. I'm gonna do swatches real quick. Of, I'm gonna sneeze. <coughs> oh, I've got some eyelash glue stuck. Huh? Who's gonna love it now? Oh, oh. <sighs> Seems like the color is building up too. Like if I want it to be a little more pigmented, I'm just petting, putting, petting, petting, petting. No. No. Please God say you're okay. Please, please, please. Oh. Okay. Now I'm gonna go in with, 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 with. with. So I did the, uh, the thing, the cutout, and I think I want to go more cooler toned. More cooler. Fuck. I think I'm, uh, I'm gonna quit moving this around. Okay. Okay, I've had enough. I've had enough! Ugh, cat hair. Uh, ew. I think that they could benefit from not have doing, not have doing, not have doing.